I would like to introduce Oliver Berben. Um, I wouldn't introduce him to a German audience because he's one of the best known uh, executive producers, head of the Constantine film production. Um, but maybe your uh, um, name is not known in, in Kenya or something like that because you, you also uh, work in, in USA. With yeah, the Constantine. Yeah. First of all, hi everybody, and uh, yeah, Constantine Film is based in in Munich, in Germany, and in Berlin, uh, and uh, Subsidiary is in the United States, in Los Angeles, for more than 30 years. Okay, good to have you here. Um, we were told to do this in German first. Uh, two guy, two German guys talking in English, but I think it's the same thing here in the banks around us, Commerzbank or Deutsche Bank, 16 guys talking in English and they all from Germany. To, so we to, to be honest, our, our German is very bad, so we switched to so, English. So we have to do it in English. I'm from Bavaria, you won't understand me. So, um, Oliver, I, I read you, you studied um, how do you say Luft- and Raumfahrttechnik? In, space in sciences. Space <laughs> sciences. What was it that uh, spared us Oliver Berben in space? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. I wanted to fly to the moon. Okay. Uh, it didn't work out because I need to wear glasses and I have hay fever and didn't work out. So I, I ended up in film. So you became producer. <laughs> producer first uh, 40, 40 films uh, until uh, 2006 as a producer. Uh, since uh, 2009, you are executive of the Constantine film. Uh, 100 more films, including uh, Die Päpstin, I don't know the English title. Pope John. Pope John. Uh, the film uh, made after Yasmina Reza's play God des Gemetzels. God of Carnage. God of Carnage, <laughs> uh, made by Roman Polanski. And the film Er ist wieder da. He's Look who's back. This whole another that was thing. an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about it yesterday or um, the day before. Um, you own a lot of uh, awards. Um, how much we we shall talk co-productions? How much is the the part of co-productions in the portfolio of the Constantine? Well, for us, since we started more than thirty years ago, also with our U.S. branch, uh, it was always like a co the core um, uh, side of the production for us. Uh, one hand was the obviously the German productions, but on the other hand, looking for international, European or international worldwide productions, uh, mainly shot in English. That's where we started, especially on the fiction feature side, I'm sorry. And uh, a, couple of, a couple of years ago, like five, six years ago, we started international co-productions and international productions, uh, English language for television in the United States. And the first uh, TV show we did there was with um, Freeform from Disney. And Netflix, uh, that's uh, Shadowhunters, which is in, uh, it's coming to an end now after the fourth season. And um, on the European side, like movies that you mentioned, like Pope Joan, for example, were like core native European production, not so much heading towards the American um, market, but towards uh, an international market, English speaking. Uh, but today, I mean, I'm sorry, but today, yeah, you're, you're the difference you have today and what, what's the great um, possibility today is that uh, even though you have two German guys speaking English now here, uh, you can do the local TV shows for the OTTs as um, German speaking productions and still they travel the world. So everybody has a chance to see it because of obviously of dubbing and, and subtitles. So the co-production heads more towards um, creative, uh, 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 creative personnel from different countries coming together and not so much only for financial reasons anymore. Um, do you know or do you have enough writers uh, for international no. program? <laughs> Uh, well, we never, you never have enough writers, you know that. Um, the good thing about the international co-productions is obviously that you're not, like, have to focus only on a single country. Um, for us, especially, um, besides the US market, what, what is very interesting is, like, the Scandinavian market, obviously, because it has a uh, cultural near to, to what we're doing here in Germany, but also, uh, if you look to other European countries, yeah, uh, if you would ask me, do we have enough of them, I would always answer with no, but I, I still think that there's a lot of potential out there of people that aren't known so well, and you need to give them more 
the possibility of creating stuff and coming on board on existing projects. And especially the TV show allows you, I think, um, to create, and we, we just talked before we get on stage here, we talked about it, especially when you're doing a show with many episodes, uh, you have the chance to invite more writers, um, also complete newbies, uh, to, to create something, to come on board, to learn, <clears throat> excuse me, and to build them up as uh, potential showrunners later on. This would be my next question. Do you uh, train or, or um, train authors or writers right from the film schools, or what do you do to, to um, get more, I think... We hire them. <laughs> you hire them <laughs> right. and hope, train, train hope is, for the best. Yeah, train, training, I mean, I think personally the best training for writers is to write, obviously, and... Um, the best thing that we can do as a company, as a production company, is um, to work closely, which we do, obviously, work closely with the film schools together and the writing schools. I mean, we just did a, for example, we did a, a TV show for Netflix and ZDF Neo, which is coming out this fall called Perfume, based on the, on the book uh, from Pat Patrick Süskind. And the writer is a female writer, Eva Kranburg is her name. She never wrote a single script before in her life. Actually, that's not true. She wrote one but script. It's a good story. But it's <laughs> no, a but it's, it's a great story. story. It's still a great story. She wrote one script at um, the Drehbuchwerkstatt München, which is a f um, like a writing school that is connected to the um, film school in Munich. And uh, she was from a complete like different planet, work-wise, and she wrote this one book. She won the, 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 this year of, of, um, of the Drehbuchwerkstatt with her script, and I read the script, and um, I, it, it, hasn't, it hasn't been done, by the way, up until now, but we gave her the whole show, so if you ask for training, yeah, we, hopefully we can train her and, and lots of other writers with the projects that we're giving them, but I think it needs to have additional impact from a lot of more impact from the, from the drama schools, from the writing schools. Um, there's by far not enough, and there's a lack, still a lack of writing, especially for television in a serialized way. Okay, so you deal with what we in German call Fachkräftemangel. <laughs> True. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so writing under good conditions is the best training. I think writing under, uh, like, good conditions, yeah. Okay, yeah, I would, I would go one step further. Writing under secured and protected uh, situations is the best way of, of learning and of trying things. The, the, the problem that we have in the business is that there's, there's not, not much time and not much energy and not much money to try. So it needs to be perfect all the time, and that's really hard. And it's, it kills a lot of things if you're trying to only be perfect all the time and not like be crazy and, and try something completely different. And in order to do that, it needs, well, as we just said, the schools, but on the other hand, it needs the companies, the production companies to, to enable the writers uh, a secure space, a room where they can try themselves, where they can hopefully be successful, uh, but also get them out of the, which you have in Germany a lot of this, um, treadmill that you have, you know, especially when you're working for regular television, the writers need, need to, because it's not, in my opinion, not paid well enough, so they need to take a lot of jobs. May I quote you? Yeah, you can quote me, I don't mind, no, I, I say that all the time and networks hate me for that, I know, but it's the truth, if, it's the truth, the, because of that you have a writer that has no time because he has like 10 other jobs to do, he doesn't have, and he needs to, he needs to uh, pay for his rent and everything, but that's not, this is not the way to, to create exceptional good television or feature, I don't believe in that. Secure and protect, I, I thought this is the slogan of the NYPD. No. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> uh, and, and you offer, since a relatively uh, short time, uh, uh, new contracts to authors exclusively to, to the authors to, to... Well, what we did also... What's the reason for that? Well, actually, it's what we just discussed. Uh, on, on the co-production side, as well as the, the local production side, the, the biggest lack um, of, of uh, possible workers is, is the writing staff. <laughs> so we decided um, two years ago to found um, 
um, first of all, um, take a lot of money in our own hands from our money, not from funded money, and create like this kind of secure spaces for writers and enable them to write their own stories or or offer them stories they could like transform like a like a novel or like whatever like a historical piece, whatever it may be. And and um, on the and and we found out that was recepted quite well, and a lot of good material came out of that. So the next step, obviously for us, was how could we how could we push that to the next level? And the next level was to hire the writers exclusively, but not in order to hire them as a work made for hire, but to give them the possibility of not taking, I don't know, three TV shows parallel uh, in order to pay their rent, but to focus on the development of single productions, of shows, of, of, of features. It's not connected to, to TV or anything. It's just to the production itself. And we started that, and everybody else, lots of my colleagues from the production side, thought we were crazy because um, it, First of all, it's, it's obviously expensive, but it paid out well. And now we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, at least four or five different writers under our contract. And they, um, they don't do it because we tell them, now sit here and write. <laughs> but, but you, can, we tell, you can stand. But we tell them, <laughs> do, your, yeah, do your stuff. Try to, do you need ideas from us? Okay. Do you have own ideas? Do your stuff. And, and if it gets made, you'll be part of it. I mean, you'll be part of the production. We would like to like, encourage the writers to be more than just writers, but to like, embrace their productions from the beginning to the end. And that needs... Kind of writer-producers, kind yes. of showrunners. So are there authors for series, serial dramas uh, and cinema or merely cinema? Well, it's mostly, f no, it's mostly focused on, on serialized uh, shows, obviously, because that's the, where you lead you need the most time and money to create a, sh a show and scripts for the show. But it's not necessarily just for shows. I mean, Bora Daktikin is a good example um, who did uh, uh, Fuck for, You Goethe. For the international colleagues, he's one of the most uh, successful. I think he is the successful. He's the most, most successful, successful writer, writer and now he's the most successful writer director. But he, he came to us as a pure writer from, from RTL, from, from shows from RTL. And, and Marty Moschkowitz gave him the chance to do his first feature as a director then. And obviously, Obviously, um, he involved or evolved into a different level, and that I think could be. So there's hope for me too. There's hope. <laughs> there's a lot of hope for you too. Okay, you you said in a in an interview, um, it's the best time to be a producer. Is it the best time to be an author too? Yeah. Well, I that's basically what I meant. It's the best time to be in this business right now. That's basically what I meant. But also for the production side, to just quote me, uh, was the reason was that um, before the outburst of the additional um, networks, OTTs that were coming, uh, you were focused as a producer mainly to do Auftragsproduktion, so-called work made for higher productions, where you have a network and they tell you what to do, and then you do that, and then maybe if you do it good, you get uh, a little bit of money, and then you maybe if you're good, you can get an additional job. So for many years, the idea of German production market was to reward the producer for producing cheap. I mean, that's basically the idea of a work made for hire. You pr you give. I mean, look at this stupid idea. I mean, you don't reward him for being good or creative or, or brave. You reward him for, be, for spending less money as possible. I mean, that's a crazy idea to compete with the international market. And obviously, that changed. So due to the new possibilities or new OTTs and everything, as we said before when we were just talking, the best thing that they are here is the pure existence of them, much more than uh, uh, the, the, the fear. The, yeah, no, the, also not the fear, but if you compare like the market and the possible productions out of OTTs to linear TV, it's still, I would say, 90% to 10%. I mean, there's very little productions coming out, local productions, I mean, it's growing, but it's still very little coming out compared to the linear market, to ARD, ZDF, RTL. But the pure existence of them make everybody, yeah, 
think a different way and say, maybe we have to change something. Maybe we have to be more brave in storytelling. Maybe we have to be more brave in getting new, different co-production models together. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, I think, that's what I meant, we are living in great times. Uh, do you think there's a real competition with the international market in Germany? No. No, there's no competition. I mean, it's, it's really funny because people always say, oh, we have to be careful, Other, otherwise we'll lose track on the international market. It's so funny, we don't have any track on the international market. Uh, we, we have to get there first. Uh, so we're not there. We're far away from there. They say comedy doesn't travel. Uh, but well, German but, comedy, but German, German comedy <laughs> obviously it doesn't travel. Obviously <laughs> comedy does travel, as yeah. the United States shows, shows us, or UK. I think in Germany it's a little hard. Maybe we're just not that funny. I mean, you have to tell me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We try to. He's funny. Um, how do you see the perspective for, for authors in the next years in, in, in the German market and in the international market, which is maybe more interesting? I mean, obviously, as we, as we said, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great time for, yeah, for writers. What can I say? I wouldn't make a difference between a local writer and an, a co-production writer or an international writer because, first of all, each and every writer is writing for one market yeah. primarily because he's from somewhere. But what is happening is that due to the new possibilities of exploiting these films and TV shows, uh, local language uh, location is not negative anymore. I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure lots of you remember Uh, when, you, when you've been to, to the MIP in Cannes, or the MIP TV, or MIPCOM, which is the TV um, ferry. Ferry? Yeah, ferry is the English word for Messe? So. Yeah, I think so. Um, when you <laughs> five, years, five years ago, you went there with a, with a German production, and you see the international buyers just, <laughs> they're just turning around. Oh, I have something else to do. Okay. And that is changing. I mean, so they, they, are, they are actually looking... German production, German writing is actually something where people get attracted to. So I think, to answer your question, from a German point of view, I think it's, it's a great time becoming a writer, it's a great time spending time with writing and, and, uh, and, and doing uh, TV production, especially TV production, even more than feature, I would say. Okay. Uh, what is the ideal relationship between producer or executive producer and writer, in your opinion? Love. Because when, yes, of course. Um, because when I went to Munich Film School in the 90s, uh, I was told the producer is your enemy. Yeah. And the, the director is your second. Who said that? The, uh, we, I, I studied directing. Not, and who, not, said that? Uh, who said that to you? I don't know. Fire him. I, 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 I didn't care because I said, I said it But a school it said it to you. A school yeah, said school. it to you. I mean, it's, this, is so, this is what I meant before. I mean, this is, it's kind of this old style stupidity of, of, of like creating enemies and borders within a creative community is just stupid. I mean, nothing will come out of that. I mean, we still have that discussion, partly uh, at the Munich Film Festival with Kontakt 18 and And you see the directors, uh, oh, why now a writer's telling me if I can direct or not. It's so stupid and it's unfortunately very German because, um, <laughs> the, no, seriously, the, the idea of a movie or a show is not a single person's um, uh, idea. It's, it's a combination of a lot of creative people coming together and doing a, a creative piece of work. Um, and... So I wouldn't talk about any the kind writer, of borders producer anymore. producer and one person, it could be I think two that, persons, I mean, three persons. Look at, the, yeah. look at the United States and mm -hmm. look at um, uh, the, the creation of the showrunner. That came out of that. It came out of that, uh, that border thinking, okay, here's the production, here's the director, and here's the writer. And uh, in the 90s, when the first uh, show with Sopranos came up like that, he was pissed off uh, working like this anymore. And so he decided, no, I want to do it differently. And I, I think we should learn from that and, and tear down any kind of walls between that. I mean, to have opinions is one thing, but to create like 
Again, I want to know the name of the teacher that told you that. <laughs> I really want to have the name because it's really You're threatening me. It's, no, I want to hear. Th it's. I think it's so I, harmful. I forgot. I forgot it because I uh, immediately I thought this this is bullshit. It's stupid. Because I I talked to the producers of the producer class, the students of the producer class, and I. I found out very fast that they were my, not my friends maybe, not everyone was my friend, but they were very interested in storytelling and I, I uh, studied directing, but it was a storyteller mainly. And, and I thought it was bu bullshit from, from, from the old idea of the uh, Autorenfilm. Autorenfilm, yeah. Who, who, uh, I said uh, before in this panel that the German concept of, of arts is an old one dealing with Richard Wagner and the Gesamtkunstwerk. <laughs> you made a film out of it too. Uh, uh, one Everybody person, did. <laughs> one genius uh, has to do everything. And so there are, then there are three or four geniuses in the room and you have a problem. Yeah, well, first of all, if you want to do something for your own, write a book or, or paint a picture, that is something you can do on your own. And no, seriously, I think it's, it's a great way of expression, of, of, of expression but Making movies or TV shows is a, is a combination of, of tens and hundreds of people working together and, and creating an own idea. So, no walls. Good for Berlin. Yeah, no we walls. Are, <laughs> we are here in Berlin, and, and Berlin is politics. Um, do you think that producers, writers have a political um, duty in this time? We are creating fiction, we are creating <coughs> fictional stories, we are creating entertainment, but do we Absol all have a political... Yeah, absolutely. Duty? I mean, basically, with everything you do in art, you have that responsibility in, your, in the society you live in. Does it always have to be, like, printed on your forehead? No, not necessarily, but if you're telling a story, it doesn't matter if it's a comedy or a crime show or drama, whatever it is, it, it's always, I mean... I would say it's always related to something that's happening in society or did happen in society or will happen if it goes to historical or, or science fiction movies. But I, I, I don't even know what so to you, answer, so to be honest. There's no other so way of doing that. So you think it's automatically done because we are all part of society and our writing is influenced by political things or do you, do you looking for relevance? Or, or well, it's not like? necessarily always, like, as I said before, on your forehead to do that, but it's always part of the creation of stories. And in the times that we're living right now, maybe it should be much more on your forehead, that's true. But I, again, I couldn't see uh, a development that is completely out of focus of the society, not just politically, but of the society that we're living in. Um, and the, the, the good situation we have is that what we're creating, especially with the shows right now, is cool, is hip, everybody wants to look at it, so you have a chance to get messages to the people without teaching them or without pointing fingers or anything, but you have a chance to tell, show them new worlds, new possibilities, new people, whatever, new ideas. So you don't think it's a commercial risk to be? I think it's a must, not a risk. Okay. <laughs> the first go. Do we have the first one left? <laughs> first one left. <laughs> first one left, oh. We have questions, because we have only five minutes left. In the back. In the, oh, back. Back. In the back. There's a micro, micro coming from the right. Uh, hello, uh, I would like to see, how do you see on the, uh, as a producer, um, the writer's um, uh, the, the writer's uh, position in uh, in a project. Do you, as a producer, is the one who ha got the power, or do you try to to deal with writer producer? I think it's a question. Uh, it's not a question of power. It's a question of of um, co-workership of all of them. Um, in 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 the best way of a production, uh, all these separate like head of departments, as you might say, from all these different uh, kinds of, 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 of territories should work together. And if there's, um, if there's a way uh, of how you want to create something, and if you should talk about this in the beginning and sit down in the beginning and see if you can find a global ground to create something like this. And I think the best shows 
has been and will be done like this. Although there will always be situations where something went, uh, goes wrong or something unexpected happened or somebody doesn't perform on any kind of level. And then you, have to, uh, you, ha you still have to act, you know. You cannot just say, okay, let's all sit down and talk this out. You have a production running with lots of people and then mostly the people that uh, are investing the money, they should at least uh, have a chance to finish the production at the very ending. But it's a complicated thing and there's no rule or, or clear way of, uh, of doing that because it's, again, it's a question of, of totally different in creative individual, in individual people working together and there's no law where you can follow up and say, this guy has to say everything and then comes this guy and this girl and this woman. That's not the way how you do a movie. I think you have to, in my opinion, the best way is to look in the beginning if you have the, if you have the same goal and the same direction you want to go. Because to create a show or a movie is hard enough. I, know, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> More questions there? Uh, can you maybe... Is this working? Yeah. Can you maybe talk a little bit more about how you create this safe and protected, protected space for writers to flourish, basically, right? So, so what are the elements that create this space in which writers can be at their best, basically? Well, first of all, I think you need to give them time and uh, the situation where they're economically um, set, <laughs> to say that friendly. I mean, you, that's the two main reasons you need, or me, main points time you need to money. give to the writers. Yeah, it's time and money. You need to give them, the, the, and that's a secure place, uh, always in life, by the way. This is something when you, when you don't feel the pressure that you have to finish something, not because it's good, but because it needs to hit a deadline on the one hand, and on the other hand, you, do, you need to finish something because you need to pay your rent. Um, I think if you take that away a little bit, that doesn't mean everybody can do whatever they want for the next 10 years, but if you just create a room where they feel secure in a way of creating their own ideas and writing them down and finding the right partners maybe also to write with mm. and to direct and to produce with, uh, that is kind of what, of what we would say uh, as a safe place or a safe environment. Next question on the right. Yes, hi. Um, do you approach these writers or do they apply? Could I, well, we approached most of them, but one applied us. So <laughs> there's no rule. There's no rule. We, we would be happy if they're approaching us. <coughs> we, see, we see the company mainly, besides being a production company, a large part of the company is like a creative hub where you see, and not just for writers, by the way, but also for producers, where you have the... the, uh, the uh, the possibility also, let's say, let's switch from writers to producers for one second, just to give you an example. To have a young, creative, like, couple of producers that just finished film school or something, they have a great idea, but they don't have the financial or power or they don't have the right contacts to the people to, to realize their ideas. So I think that it's good to open the doors for production companies like this. And that is the same thing for writers. And not say, well, listen, come work for us but say, okay, do your thing as a part of the, of the creative community of Constantine Film, for example, but do it with your own company, do it with your own people, because then it's like small satellites, you know? So the idea for us is not to grow and, and put everything under one roof, but more to create lots of different satellites on a producing side, on the writer's side, <laughs> on, I don't know, maybe also on the director's side, and have them create their own um, products. No more questions, and I got the time out sign. That, one more question, we, we can do that. Okay, uh, when you g gave the uh, secured uh, environment for writers, in your experience, how many times uh, were you satisfied, or how many times were you disappointed? Not a single time up until now. Not a single time. That's Honestly. The, that's the best thing but to we, end this. But we, only, <laughs> but we only started two years ago. But up until now, not a single time. 
Okay, Oliver. Very interesting. It was a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.